tip, character designers. If you're struggling to come up with a monster design, try just mashing random animals together. Satisfaction guaranteed works every time. Ancient Greece was certainly a big fan of the concept, as basically every monster in the mythos is either regular person or animal with a non-standard number of limbs, heads, or eyes, or two or more animals mashed together. It's usually not even explained why they're like that. Why is the offspring of Poseidon and Medusa a horse with wings? Who knows? Why do Typhon and Echidna, two mostly humanoid, somewhat snaky monsters, produce several multi-headed dogs and one perfect combo of goat, snake, and lioness? Primordial genetics is funky like that. And geez, the Minotaur? What unholy union could have made a half bull, half dude? Well, actually, that one is pretty straightforward but you're not gonna like it. Now, contextually, the Minotaur is a kind of mysterious figure because the Minoan civilization he's derived from is pretty unknown in a lot of ways. It was a powerful Bronze Age civilization that flourished on the island of Crete from 3000 BCE to about 1100 BCE. And it's not 100% clear what caused it to fall apart, but it super fell apart so hard we didn't even know it existed until 1900. We have tons of their relics and architecture and stuff, and also a lot of their writing, but unfortunately, we can't understand any of it. Yep, it's all in linear A and mysterious hieroglyphs, and we can't read any of them. So we kind of have have no idea what they were up to. But because of their extensive trade network, plenty of civilizations we can understand were influenced by them, and we have lots of myths and stories and maybe even some gods that seem to have been originally derived from the largely unknown Minoan religion. Now, basically everything about that is pure speculation, but if there's one thing we can say with confidence, it's that bulls show up a lot. Not minotaurs, though. While bull-headed humans show up in Greek art about Crete, Minoan art itself only ever shows regular bulls. The Minotaur is a specifically Greek story about the ancient Minoans, referencing their wide spread bull symbolism by peppering in bulls and bull accessories at regular intervals. It also frames the mythologized Minoan civilization in a generally antagonistic role, possibly because of all the forced oceanic trade, also known as piracy. So basically, it's biased, filtered, and offset from the source by several centuries, but we have nothing else to go on because we can't read their language. Let this be a PSA. Don't let languages die, kids. You're gonna really annoy scholars in like 3,000 years. So anyway, the tale of the Minotaur begins with King Minos of Crete, the son of Zeus and Europa. So we're already off to a roaring start in the Functional Relationships Department. In order to prove that he's a bad enough dude to rule Crete instead of his brothers Radamanthus or Sarpedon, Minos calls in a favor from Poseidon, who sends him a beautiful snow-white bull, with the understanding that Minos is gonna sacrifice the bull to him afterwards as thanks. Everyone is super impressed with this stake in the making, and Minos becomes king, but he's just so impressed with this bull that he refuses to sacrifice it, and swaps it out for a way lamer, super less hot bull. Poseidon is enraged by this slight, so he slips Aphrodite a 20 to get her to make Minos' wife Pasiphae fall in love with the bull. What could go wrong? But unlike Pasiphae, the Cretan bull has very high standards. First of all, being a quadruped is a must. Second of all, must also be a cow. Fortunately, from a certain point of view, acclaimed architect, inventor, and future part-time aeronaut Daedalus happens to be on Crete at the time, so Pasiphae commissions him to make her a hollow wooden cow suit. For recreational purposes. Daedalus, consummate professional that he is, takes the commission with zero outward judging, and I'm just gonna skip over this part because, come on, we get it. Oh, hey, where'd that thing come from? So the Minotaur, as the child abomination of a truly beastly relationship, doesn't really have a place in the natural order of things, which unfortunately means he can't really eat anything besides people. Tragic. Rather than, I don't know, killing him or letting him starve or something, Minos consults the Oracle at Delphi, who tells him to build that sucker a lavish basement apartment and then throw away the key. Daedalus scores another commission when Minos asks him to build an absolutely massive labyrinth for the Minotaur. Then, to make sure nobody learns how the labyrinth works, Minos locks Daedalus up in a tower with Icarus, five tons of supplies, and every tool ever made. That ought to hold him. But that's a story for, uh, four years ago, apparently. So anyway, with the Minotaur functionally imprisoned in a really big, impossibly complicated maze, that fixes the potential rampage problem, but still leaves the whole food issue kind of up in the air. But what's the point in being king if you can't be kind of a dick about it? The exact justifications vary from telling to telling, but long story short, Minos demands a human sacrifice of 14 young Athenians every few years to keep the Minotaur fed. This goes smoothly for the first couple sacrifices, but on the third go-round, this whole Minotaur-human sacrifice situation draws the attention of a spunky young hero aiming to prove himself. Specifically Theseus, Athens' founder hero and official best boy, which really reflects more poorly on Athens than anything else. Anywho, Theseus brings a big cool boat and plenty of gumption, but not much in the way of a plan. So it's lucky for him that Minos' daughter Ariadne takes one look at this new cute boy and goes full head over heels for him, possibly because she doesn't get out much. Now Ariadne is very familiar with the labyrinth. In fact, in one early citation of the story mentioned in the Iliad, it suggested the original version of Daedalus' labyrinth was built specifically for Ariadne as a dancing path with no minotaur involved. Mythologically, Ariadne and the labyrinth go way back, maybe even even farther back than the Minotaur. And some people theorize Ariadne is actually originally some kind of Cretan goddess known as the Mistress of the Labyrinth, which is dope as all hell, but not what we're here for. Ariadne helps Theseus out by giving him a ball of thread, called a clue, that'll let him retrace his path out of the labyrinth. And Theseus makes his way down with her guidance, eventually finding the Minotaur and engaging it in totally rad combat until he manages to decapitate it. You're welcome, Minos. And so ends the tale of the Minotaur. Surprisingly, well, 
I think it's surprising anyway. Minos doesn't seem too happy to have his monster problem fixed, and Theseus and Ariadne book it out of Crete along with the other Athenians. But for whatever reason, later retconned as divine intervention, but originally just kind of a huge dick move, Theseus totally ditches Ariadne and leaves her alone on the shores of Naxos while she sleeps. Fortunately, when she wakes up, her grief and betrayal is mitigated somewhat by the fact that Dionysus himself shows up to help her out and also maybe propose or something because he thinks she's really cute. And they end up getting married and living very happy immortal lives together up on Olympus. While in contrast, Theseus's love life goes... Not well. What with all the kidnapping and personally pissing off Hades and such. Yeesh, javelin dodged. Moral of the story? Probably, uh, keep your promises, be true to your responsibilities, and, uh, oh yeah, stop boning animals. Jeez, guys. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. I know you were right. Believing for so long. I'm all out of love. What am I without you? I can't be too late. I know I was so wrong